Hey everyone, we're going to be taking a look at what you can do with Microsoft Excel tables. Microsoft Excel tables are very useful tools um, that can help you sort your data, organize it, filtering, and perform some calculations with it. All right, so let's get started. Let's talk about what would be a good example of a table. And a table is going to um, have a header row, um, and it will be just look simple, looks like a table. This is an example of what would not be a table right here. Why? Because we have blank rows everywhere. We've got some blank columns. We would have to do a little bit touch-up work to get that ready to go. All right. Okay, so to create a table, you're going to begin by clicking one cell inside of the data set. You go to Insert, Tab, click on Table, or if you're on a PC, you can do Control-T. That will open up a little dialog box on a PC. The Create Table box comes up on a Mac a little bit differently, but basically just ensure that you have headers, your range is good, and we click OK. And just like that, we have a table. It is table number one until you name it. Good idea to name your table. So uh, this is dealing with customers. So I'll type customers. You also can change the colors if you want. There's a bunch in there. And that's on the table tools design tab. Quick little trick if you're into designing and doing a little special, you just go up to page layout, change the color theme here. So then you can go back and they will all be different. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, and then uh, now we have a table. Let's talk about you know what you do with table. Well first of all there are these triangles here that are going to allow you to sort. So you can sort um, by dates, oldest to newest, or newest to oldest. Okay, now that being said, if you do type something in, if we were to put in a new record here, control semicolon gives us today's date. Control quote gives you a shortcut to copy what's right above. So you do have to resort. So don't be fooled by it. it does not sort automatically. You got to go back, sort newest, oldest to keep that up there. Um, in addition to sorting, you can sort alphabetically, you know, A to Z. And then you can also sort numerically. So I might want to put largest to smallest and doing that. And that is a really cool feature of a table. And um, if you add rows, it will add to the table. If you wanted to add a new column, just go over to the side and type the new name of the table. So let's say that we want to um, put together their, the name. I would like to put together the name and the customer ID at the same time. So I'm just going to call this uh, customer ID name, something like that. See that? Just boom. It just automatically um, takes you into the mode of seeing a new field there. And then to do this formula, I type an equal sign and click on the actual cell, now depending on what version of Excel you have, it'll look a little different. Basically, it's going to have an at symbol for the field name next to it, and that's the current row of that field. I'm going to type an ampersand, and then a quote, and then a dash, then a quote, then another ampersand. Basically, I'm going to have a, a dash in between the, last, the customer names and their customer IDs. I'm going to hit enter. A lot of times the table will just automatically go down here. That's what that box overwrite all cells in the form with this formula will work. Or we could have also double clicked and pulled it down too. Pretty cool, huh? 
pretty cool. So um, the basically you can add rows or columns to your table and it will grow um, automatically. And it's very, very useful if you're going to be doing a VLOOKUP or some kind of information that you need to refer back to this, this table with here. Um, in addition to sorting and doing formulas, you also could, you can filter. So let's say I need to find folks that joined back in 2017 last year. So I can come here and date filters. And I can then come in here and play around with these wide range of values. So last year. Like that. That's really cool, huh? I'm going to clear that out. And next, I'm going to look for anybody with a score of less than eight or less. So I can go to number filters, less than or equal to, and type an eight. And there we go. We have a filter there. So if you have a filter, you're going to have blue rows. The row numbers become blue when you filter, and then you have that indicator there. All right. Um, so let me show you another example of a table. Um, and this time what we're going to do is make a table here. And I want to do a calculation with the table. I want to know, let's imagine, I want to know um, of the Cincinnati Reds organization, what is the average weight? Okay, so I'm going to do Control T, which is the same thing as clicking table. Okay. First, I'll come up here and I'll just go for the search. And since there's so many in here, I can easily just start typing reds my favorite baseball team let's make a reds table oh i can't <laughs> because i changed the uh the color scheme there so just keep that in mind fill yeah it's gonna be ugly guys but watch out it's gonna be ugly now did I apply that? Here it is. Oof. Too, that's too bad. I'm not going to do that. A better way if I wanted to make it red is just go back to the design on the themes. And if I pick a different theme, I'll find one in here. Purple, then go back to design. And thing is, if you don't see the colors you want, you got to change the theme, basically. Okay, back to business. What is the average ball player's weight? All right, I'm going to do it without any typing, no, nothing on the keyboard, okay, just my mouse. I'll go to the design tab. Now, I won't see this design tab if I'm not in the table. So you got to be inside the table. When you're on the design tab, we have a feature called the total row. Give that a click. And what will happen is it will put a total down here. And the last field will get populated there. If you don't like what you see there, um, that's the count, by the way. You just hit delete. You can delete those. It's right here in the total row where I can come to the drop down and select average. Awesome. So that's the subtotal of these players average. Now, maybe we want to round up. So I'll go back to the home tab and just start decreasing some decimals as uh, 196 gets rounded up. That's pretty neat. Now, if I want to see the Yankees, for example, I just come right here, type Yankees. And it will replace the Yankees with, with the, and it keeps the, the total uh, row in there. So you see lots of benefits for the total rows. Um, you also can do other things such as the max, which is the heaviest 
Yankee and the who weighs the least? 165. Wow. That's pretty that's pretty that's about how much I think I weigh. I don't know. Uh you've got the count, you got sum. Now it wouldn't make sense to sum sum it all up, but you could right there. Two, 20, 25. Again, what are we at trying to do? If this was a budget, that would make perfect sense, but this is people's weight. So I'm gonna click average there. Awesome. 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 Okay. I'm going to leave you with one more uh, nice way to work with the, t uh, uh, with the table. Okay. So we've got an, these expenses here. Okay. I'm going to do control T. Okay. Get a quick table called expenses. Okay. So that's important. My table is called expenses and Let's find out how much money we have spent on rent. Okay, and we anticipate that we will at one point go down at the bottom and add rent to the, to, to the next month there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use the sum ifs. And I'm gonna just type it. So let me try to zoom in if I can. See if it makes it a little bit easier. Equals sum ifs. There's a there's two. There's an if and an ifs. I always go with the ifs. That seems to be the easiest for me. It's gonna ask me what do I want to add? It's my sum range. Well, if I remember the name of the table, expenses, it will pop up. I hit tab. Then I'm gonna hit the left square bracket. And when I hit the left square bracket, no spaces after that, I get a list of all of the fields of the table. Now, one thing is when I hit tab here, I wish it closed the square bracket, but you do have to type the square bracket at the end. So that is saying, hey, let's add up the amounts in the table. And it goes all the way down there. That's, that's the calculation there for the summing. But type a comma. Now it's asking me for the criteria range. So that's gonna be all of the category ones. So the table, go with the table name first, expenses, left square bracket, category, right square bracket. And you can start to see, hopefully in the screenshot here, you can see there's a red line around all of those. And trust me, it'll go all the way down and it's dynamic, it'll be whatever the Total number of rows equals for the whole time, okay? But lastly, we need to do one more field uh, argument. What, it, what are we trying to do? We're trying to calculate the rent. So I'm gonna type rent inside quotation marks for the formula there, and it should go find it. Okay, I'm gonna press the enter key. And find, we have 72, five zero okay well let's just go see if if that is correct so i can i know i can search by rent yep and then i know that i can do control shift t to turn on the total row which is already turned on tells me i've got 20 transactions but then i come here and click sum, beautiful, 7250, okay, that is great. Okay, let me turn off the total row, let me unclear the, the, the filter, and let's go see what happens if I add a new rent, okay. So I'll say in November, we had geekdom $50 rent. So I just added a new row to the table. Remember, this is a table because of the expenses table that we've already selected. And you can see it went up. So that is really cool. And again, how does that formula look? We use the sum ifs function and it 
basically, if you can see the structure here, name the table and then the field name in square brackets. Table first, field name second, and it will automatically apply for the entire table. And as it grows, so will your formula. Things you need to worry about is if one of the rents had somebody typed it a space. Watch what happens if I hit a space right here. Okay, so that's a little tricky, huh? $675 was not taken into effect. Um, I didn't mean that. Right, and then I'm gonna go backspace that and hit, and it's back in there. So how, how could you accommodate for that? Um, you could actually do a formula that has an asterisk right there, which is a wild card, which would include anything else after that. So wild cards, a different lesson there, but just a quick little trick if you're doing it. My recommendation is you would use the trim function. If that was the case, you would just do equals trim over that. And the whole purpose of the trim function is to delete extra spaces. So you, you would do that, get them all, copy it, and then paste the values right on top. And then that way you've got a really clean, 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 clean list here with no spaces in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this video on tables and um, you'll find that you can start practicing with any old table that you want. And remember that tables can grow and get larger uh, by rows or columns and they really do help set up a lot for your advanced functions in Excel. Let's see here. Um, oh, I was gonna do a sequential solutions plug here. If you wanna go uh, check out my blog, Go to sequentiasolutions.com. And you will find um, plenty of other resources, including an Excel keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet that you can print out to um, get those keyboard shortcuts that I had mentioned um, inside of today's uh, video. Have a great day, everyone.